Hi there, my name is FixFox and welcome to Heroes of Might and Magic 2. This is the F Heroes edition. Starting up this video, I wanted to dive into one of the features of the F Heroes edition, which is the hotkeys. I can find them in the game menu, in the settings while I'm in game, or I can find them here at the front by clicking on this door and hitting hotkeys in their configuration. I have looked through these hotkeys. Uh, some of them are pretty standard. Hitting return just to click through some event and just acknowledge it and move on. Uh, pretty standard, a lot of people use that. Being able to toggle some of your full screen to windowed modes. Um, some of these are a little bit useless, I think, or maybe even a little bit worrisome. I could hit N from this menu, for example, and just hit new game. It's nice to have the functionality and have the option, but it seems like kind of putting a hat on a hat. It's very easy to navigate the heads up display. So you might as well just use that in my opinion. Um, at no point are you gonna be able to play Heroes of Might and Magic without a mouse. So you might as well use the mouse that you gotta use anyway. Um, you can select mice or accept maps select maps and their sizes and their, their qualities from the creation menu. In a hot seat game, you can change some statistics or you can change some options there. Uh, some of these don't make a whole lot of sense to me. The descendants, I mean, uh, clicking on which campaign you want to do, the price of loyalty campaigns is what we're playing through now, specifically uh, whether it's the rolling campaign or the Arch Archibald campaign. It just helps you navigate the menu quicker, I suppose. Maybe if you're doing some kind of from boot up speed run, this could be helpful. Uh, but really where you start to get into some valuable instances is when we're navigating the world map, just using the numpad, uh, saving game quickly in, in, in game, continuing hero movement, going to the next hero in the combat screen, casting a, an adventure spell, putting a hero to sleep. These are hotkeys that I think could be universally used. Uh, you just might want to reassign them yourselves to something that makes more sense to you so you don't forget to use them. Uh, next Town, for example, I can see me using that all the time. End Turn, oh, certainly. Uh, let's see. Digging for Artifact. Default Action. Default Action is one that I use all the time because it's sometimes the only way to really navigate uh, adventure map features. For example, if I'm trying to uh, go through a lot of changes in a trading post on the map, I'll step on the trading post and if I don't use my space key as a way to re-engage with that doodad on the adventure map, I'll have to step off and then step back on to trigger the event. Whereas if I just hit space, Hey, I'm already at the trading post. I would know I walked out of the building for a second, but I'm just gonna walk right back in and not waste any movement points as maybe I'm adjusting things for purchasing in another castle. So the, the space bar as a default action is, is very much one of my top three hotkeys used all the time. Space bar is a very important one to know. And then the other ones I would really recommend knowing are at the very bottom when it's talking about splitting stacks. So I noticed in the last video I did that at one point I accidentally split some stacks when I wasn't planning on it as I was moving units from one hero to another. Uh, by splitting a stack by half, I can, I can use a left shift. By splitting the stack by one, I can just do left control and then joining stacks, I can hit left alt. Uh, it was nice for me to realize, oh, <laughs> that's why uh, I had an unintended uh, action while I was playing the game. I had used a hotkey that I wasn't aware even existed. Um, good to know, again, good to know that we have the functionality and probably want to make sure that you know how to manipulate your army for tactical purposes in game. You are severely limited if you only can put troops where the computer will let you put them um, and not adjust your, your army on the fly. Uh, a few of these other hotkeys may be useful. Um, watch out, I suppose, in battle. Being able to hit R and retreat from battle might not be 
exactly what you planned on doing. Hopefully it will let you confirm or deny that action before you do so. I think it will, but all the same, it would sure be a shame if you accidentally got a little overzealous and clicked right through a battle and just ran away. Uh, other than that, there's, there's again, some good options here. I appreciate the F Heroes has done this and, and that you can rebind these keys as you choose. Uh, it's never a bad thing to have more functions, so good work. Okay, so then for today, we are going to load up the campaign for scenario number three. Essentially, the way that the rolling campaign works at this point is that we have an optional campaign. Linearly, there's, can there's scenario one, two, three, four, five, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you can do a little bonus campaign or, or, or bonus scenario between two and four, if you so desire, where you save the dwarves. If you do save the dwarves, you get an award. We're going to see exactly what that looks like in a second. But... Uh, this is, of course, a playthrough of the entire campaign. I'm not going to go through and just ignore a whole scenario to play, even if I didn't care about the award, which, because this campaign gets so hard, we are going to need all the help we can get. So we're going to view the intro in one second. Let me just uh, turn up the sound. Uh, I've gotten some good feedback that the sound quality is, is a little tough here. Sometimes the game in-game gets so loud and then sometimes for the intros and things like that, it's just so quiet. So I'm going to have to manually turn up the, the sound. Okay, well, let's view that intro. Congratulations, a splendid display of military acumen. With the financial backing of this rich farming region, we now have the gold it takes to win this war. Now we need to secure the resources our enemy Archibald has begun to move troops into the mountainous mining regions of the south known as Karator, and we need to oppose him and seize these resources for ourselves. At the same time, I have received a plea for help from Rockman, King of the Dwarves. Archibald's warlocks have attacked a dwarven village four days ago, slaughtering every last man, woman, and child in their quest for dwarven gold. Finding none, they press their attack against the rest of the dwarven holdings. My general, I seek your counsel. Shall we launch an immediate attack on Archibald's forces in Karator, or shall we go to the aid of the dwarves? Okay. And so that's the choice. Do we move on to scenario four, or do we help the dwarves and do a little sidestep? We are absolutely going to go help the dwarves. We're going to make sure our difficulty is still on hard. And do scenario three, save the dwarves. Your task is to defend the dwarves against Archibald's forces, capture all the enemy towns and castles to win, and be sure not to lose all of the dwarf towns at once, or the enemy will have won. We can choose between being the wizard faction, or the knight faction, or the sorceresses. Dwarves are sorceresses anyway. I think that there's some strategic advantage of being a sorceress, plus we haven't played them yet. That's what we're going to do, and let's dive right into it. Your forces are thinly spread in an effort to defend all of the dwarf towns, which may not be transformed into castles. Consolidate your forces and smite down the enemy before the towns fall. Okay. Uh, compared to scenario number two, this is of course a much bigger map. You can see the, the borders go a, a long way, and I have no troops in the middle. I have no towns or castles in the, in the middle of the map. It's mostly dark, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six towns and three heroes. Yeah, I am spread out a little bit. Consolidating my power and for my forces may be a little bit difficult. Just to start, let's click through all the towns and see what we have. Uh, so we have at the 11 o'clock position, it looks like we have two towns fairly close to each other um, with the capability for one of building battle dwarves. The town may not be upgraded into a castle. It does come with a mage guild and the tavern is saying the truth is out there. Straight out of the X-Files, Mulder and Scully are going to pop into Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Actually, that seems somewhat on brand. 
Heroes of Might and Magic 2 is already a mix between pretty much everything Tolkien uh, and then some random doodads here and there. Might as well bring the X-Files into it. And then also at the 11 o'clock position, maybe at the 10 o'clock position, you have uh, a town that can only do dwarves and also has a mage guild there. At the 1 o'clock position, we have a mage guild, some dwarves, and a tavern. It looks like there's an enemy hero right outside this town, but I'm guessing that with just a couple of centaurs that he's not going to try and take that town anytime soon. Those defenders should be fine for now. Over in the 5 o'clock spot or 4 o'clock spot, bottom right corner, mage guild, dwarves, 6 o'clock spot. That's where we have one of our heroes. Looks like battle dwarves can be purchased there at a mage guild. And then we have a main town over at about the 7 o'clock position. With full functionality, we can build this town from the ground up to our liking and we'll go through I imagine and and really levy that into a fighting force so with the sorceresses unlike the Knights of the Barbarians they are uh, gonna take a little bit of time to build up and get their top tier units the they are not however so reliant on resources and time to get upper units such as the warlocks or the wizards factions might be um, starting off with our uh, units that we can eventually produce here at the well. They have the level 1 creature, the Sprite. I love the Sprite. The Sprite has no retaliation. They can fly across the map and jam up shooters. The only issue is that they're so fragile that maintaining a stack of them is often very, very difficult. What you'll find is you'll have maybe you know 20 in a stack during any fight, and that's usually enough to, to get one good hit off, sure, but then, uh, you know, some orc chieftains or some enemy uh, shooters can probably just melee them down. So they're a very fragile one-time use kind of a deal. A good candidate, though, to split the stacks into one if you have extra army room. Dwarves are, are, are solid tanks. They have good hit points for a level 2 creature. Um, don't underestimate a whole stack of dwarves. The only issue is that they're so slow. Once upgraded into Battle Dwarves, they become serviceable, but right off the gate, they are pretty slow. I think they have a, a 2 hex speed. That's that's really bad. In the same way that I don't really want to go adventuring with the Iron Golems for the Wizarding units, uh, Dwarves sometimes you have to question, do I take them or not? But early on, you need all the firepower you can get with Sorceresses, so generally you take them and you just suck it up and, and take the slow movement speed. We also have elves. One of the best things about the sorceress factions, you have two shooters, and that starts off with the level three or the tier three elves. Elves can be upgraded into grand elves that will then get two shots. Whether they're elves or grand elves, they're very serviceable shooters, fairly fragile with only 15 hit points, but they can pump out a ton of damage and you can get some big stacks going. And their counterpart, their secondary shooter is then right after that at level four with the druids they don't have any specialties or, or special abilities they're just a solid unit um I, I if i if i if they were able to avoid any kind of melee penalty they would be pretty much the perfect shooter right up there with the arc mages um but they don't and and i guess everybody's got to have their weaknesses uh the tier five unit for the sorceresses the unicorns i'm not really big on because yeah they're fast and yeah they can do damage between 7 to 14 uh, but they're just 40 hit points so at that point what do i need i need something that can defend my shooters my druids and my elves and then my tier 5 creature can't really take a hit my tier 2 creature is really slow and, and i can struggle to use in combat so I kind of have to rely on this hit and run uh, deal where my druids and my elves better shoot, hit hard, hit fast, take down the enemy, and then I just have unicorns to help clean up. But but in a really tough fight, unicorns I don't really feel like stack up as a level five creature. 
Um, they do have the ability to blind. They have a 20% chance to blind a unit in combat. The blind is much like the spell that you would find for any hero, but again, just a little lackluster. The, the best unit, the tier 6 unit for the sorceresses, the phoenix, are terrific. Absolutely terrific. They are one of the two fastest creatures in the game. Uh, right up there with the knight faction uh, cavaliers. No, not the cavaliers. The champions, the upgraded version. Uh, and so they have ultra fast speed. That's the seven hexes they can move, essentially. Uh, but since they're flyers, they'll cross the whole battlefield, no problem. And so that's the best thing about sorceresses is that you will get initiative. You're going to have the fastest unit on the field most times. You're going to be able to cast the first spell. You're going to be able to reapply uh, any spells you're going to need to your good heroes or, or uh, get off any debuffs that the enemy might have cast on you at the very start of each turn of combat. They are also serviceable. 100 hit points, they can take a hit. 20 to 40 damage, that's pretty darn good. And uh, I wish that they, that they had the rebirth function but I don't think that they do, actually. Uh, the idea being that if you kill all the stacks that from the ashes, one or two or three phoenixes may arise, and you can uh, keep your phoenixes from attrition. I, I know that that's the case in later editions of Heroes of Might and Magic. I don't think that that's the case in Heroes 2, but I don't remember. We're going to have to wait and find out just to see if they have any special abilities. So, overall, scale of, of 1 to 6... Six being warlocks and the best faction in the game, I would say that sorceresses are tied for fourth. Um, they're either third or fourth with necromancers, in my opinion. Um, good units. We're gonna we're gonna have a good game here. And again, because this is a this scenario is built thematically upon rescuing and saving the dwarves, it makes sense to play as them. So where to begin this is my, going to be my main town the only one that i can upgrade and build uh, dwellings in i think that starting off knowing that i've got uh, some serviceable troops here right now i'm thinking that i'm going to pick up some archers or some elves along with whatever other creatures i can afford here and start moving out here uh, nice to have an observation tower right from the get-go so I can make good decisions about do I go north, do I go south. Um, some key tenants I'm noticing. This is the first map where we really have a whole lot going on in the water. In scenario two, there was some ship action that we could do. Uh, this looks innocuous. Looks like a little pond here and there's no other boats, but there is a whirlpool. The whirlpool can have ships travel between bodies of water that are otherwise not connected at the cost of some of your troops occasionally falling overboard in the maelstrom. Um, but there is also a shipwreck survivor who can give you a random artifact. And these shipwreck survivors can occasionally be absolutely ludicrous. If you know the reference I just used with the word ludicrous, um, leave me a like in the comments or, or, or tell me in the comments. But the Shipwreck Survivors can give you legendary artifacts like the Battle Garb of Anduin. Just out of the blue, the best artifact in the game, a combined artifact, which Heroes of Might and Magic uh, 2 didn't really do a whole lot, but Heroes 3 later did to great effect. And you might also get something stupid or terrible like a Tax Lane or a Fizz Bin of Misfortune, artifacts that actually hurt you. It's, it's it's just so weird that it can all be tied up into, you know, uh, this one random thing in the middle of the water. But I can never lay off of them. I'm just a gambler at heart. What can I say? This will be a plus one to morale. This will be a, a prevent on any paralyzed spells. I'm seeing that there's a, a hill fort here. Hill forts are very useful, and they're going to be very useful for this campaign specifically because they allow you to upgrade your dwarves to battle dwarves for free. I may not even build in my main castle the upgraded cottage. I, I may, I may not. It may just be easier for me to save the gold and 
get the free upgrades by just spending the time to walk over there and make that happen. It's nice to see that I've got my sawmill and my ore mine close by. Wow, this is an excellent little cache of artifacts and resources here. Several vampires are fairly tough. If they were vampire lords, I wouldn't even worry about going there anytime soon. But for now, um, it, I'll keep that in the back of my mind. A trading post, that can be important later. Dwarf cottages will give you free troops of whatever types. Um, we noticed in previous scenarios, the archer houses and the peasant, the thatched huts that you could find on the map to just get free units once a week. Uh, those dwarf cottages can give us a lot of troops very quickly. And then I'm noticing for the first time we see snow. Snow is, uh, snow is, uh, a, a, has a great penalty on it. Uh, so we need to be careful when trying to traverse through snow, much like we needed to be careful with swamp uh, to be smart with our movement points. I'm going to go north because I've got my two primary mines that I need. Most buildings and upgrades take wood and ore, so getting those early and often is absolutely uh, an important choice. I will pop in here so I can pick up the spells. All the sorceresses come with their own spell book. I don't have to purchase it. And I'm going to just kind of explore into here a little bit. Bit. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna head this champion towards the hill fort now. Halfling hole, a group of halflings with a desire for greater glory wish to join me. Do I accept? Absolutely. That's 25 free halflings. That's some shooters early on that I wouldn't have otherwise had. And I'm gonna try and stay on the roads a little bit. I notice again this this hero is here, but he doesn't have any army with him. I don't think I'm gonna need to worry about him too much. There's another sawmill. It might be most efficient for me just to go in, pick up some troops, and then stay on the road. I don't want to spend all my gold on the troops I can purchase in the small hamlets. I, I may just wait right now and make sure that I'm, I'm otherwise good. But I'll travel on the roads to try and save some room. I know I can't build in any of the hamlets because the towns may not be upgraded to a castle. And so on to the next one. Okay, we have gems. I'll pick up this spell. <laughs> uh, Shrine of the Second Circle, the Haunt spell. It haunts a gold mine with uh, ghosts. I don't get the resources. They don't get the resources. This will summon eight ghosts to guard the mine. Ghosts can be absolutely terrifying. They are the most broken unit in the game. I don't think I've said that yet about any other unit. I've just said that there's tough units, but this one is absolutely broken. Hillfort. All the dwarves that you have in your army may be trained by the battle masters of the fort. Your army now contains battle dwarves. My 14 dwarves go to battle dwarves. Great pickup. I will go grab some more dwarves as well, just since I'm in the area. And I'm going to pick up my sawmill, view mines. I'm going to cast view mines right now. This is an adventure map spell, and it gives me the ability to see through the fog of war. Uh, where some certain mines are. Uh, this is incredibly useful when I'm looking for uh, a map or for a resource I don't have yet. Um, and so, ooh, that bothers me. So what's J? There's no key like there usually is in like uh, view resources. It, it'll have a little key that will indicate, you know, G is for gold and, and S is for sulfur and things like that. What's J? Is that gem mine? Is that jewels? It's got to be jewel mine. Because the resources you can get in this game are wood, ore, sulfur, crystal, mercury, gems. Did I say crystal? <laughs> uh, there is no J, is my point. <laughs> maybe, maybe you they had to figure out between gems and gold. G for gold mine, G for gems, G for gold mine. And so maybe J, they did go for jewels. If this whole time uh, the mine for gems has been a jewel mine, this is going to be an absolute Mandela effect. 
It's going to be absolutely terrible. Um, this is worth one spell point to me. It's nice to know that there's there's no major concentration. But right now I'm not looking for any mine in particular. I'm just going to know that I have this in my back pocket. It's a cheap spell. One spell point. No worries. Uh, I guess I need to purchase a building up here. I will pick up... I picked up the archery range to get the druids because my hero was adventuring forth. Right now, I could get the stone hinge or I could get the statue. I'm going to get the statue now because I'm going to need it sooner or later. I might as well get the bonus now. End of day two. Uh-oh. What's this guy doing? So that's that same hero. He's coming back. I don't know if he picked up more centaurs or if that's the same centaur stack he had before just split. Uh, between ballistics and eagle eye ballistics is more shots or better shots in a fight uh, on an enemy castle or eagle eye you know what it's about we don't take eagle eye not here not now this is a new uh very important adventure map i don't know what are we going to call these tourist attractions <laughs> the stone liths are one of the ways that they the game developers could make the maps smaller these stone lifts are connected to another set of stone lifts somewhere else on the adventure map. And by stepping on the stone lifts, you are then instantly transported to the other stone lifts. Uh, so you can, you can traverse large swaths of land in a single turn. Um, and and uh, you've got to watch out for these because if the enemy is on the other side and you don't know where these stone lifts connect, you can have an enemy champion right on top of you uh, out of the absolute blue. So right now, some battle dwarves are guarding it. We will trust that they will hold hold firm. And I'm not going to be the one to kill them until unless I really need it. Dwarf Cottage, a group of dwarves with a desire for greater glory wish to join me. I'll accept. And I'll accept. That's an extra 37 dwarves. 37 dwarves. That's three or four weeks worth of dwarves if I, if I was purchasing them in my own town. Uh, this looks like a free artifact. It's not a very good one. You pause to help the diplomat with a broken axle. You pause to help a, dip a diplomat with a broken axle fix his problem. That doesn't read right. In gratitude, he gives you a writing quill with magical properties, which he says will help you help people see things your way. This just reduces the cost of surrender to 10% of the total cost of troops I have in my army. Niche uses at best. Um, sometimes where this could be valuable is you can do... Uh, i got to make sure I'm not culturally insensitive. You can get very, very good spells in your army like Elemental Storm or Armageddon. You can then get some troops who are immune to magic and you can go on a suicide quest where your hero fights the enemy hero or the enemy town, casts this terrible, uh, huge damage inflicting spell, and then either run away or surrender, rehire that hero, and then come back and fight another day and do that as many times as you possibly can to reduce the enemy's units by a lot. It's a great tactic. Uh, <laughs> And this might help with something like that. Uh, we're uh, getting rid of 90% of the total cost uh, of surrendering can make that a more effective tactic. If the, all the cards stack up, this could be useful, but otherwise very, very niche. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Going to pick up some treasure chests, 1,500 gold. We will take the basic luck. Um, I'm, I'm, my objective really is the ore mine, so that's where I'm heading. There's a lot of fog of war going on. Scouting is always going to be useful in that regard. And then, is there anything else I really need right now? Interesting, I can build a shipyard for the first time. Uh, and then Stonehenge. We're going to go with the Stonehenge. Just get as many unit dwellings as we can before day seven. Okay, he thought better of attacking my hometown there. Do I follow the road or do I go off into the darkness? I think we'll follow the road, try to just 
get more information. We'll take luck over mysticism. Mysticism regenerates spell points. Luck gives me additional combat stats, potentially. Go through the snow to pick up my ore mine. And then I guess one thing to be on the lookout for is Mercury. The Sorceress Town relies heavily on Mercury. Uh, phoenixes do cost one Mercury per unit. And of course, their dwelling costs 20 Mercury. So we'll keep an eye on that. This is going to suck up all my gems. I guess the Defense Meadow or potentially two levels of the Mage Guild could be an important question because, I mean, that's that would be... I think it's four gems at level two, as we see here, and then I think that bumps up to six gems for the level three mage guild. Um, I could have, so that's a ten, total of 10 gems there if I wanted to get the mage guild, or I can uh, bankrupt myself on the gems. I, I think I'm gonna bankrupt myself on the gems just knowing that I have only five sulfur, five crystal, five mercury, and so I couldn't get two levels of mage guild anyway. up some extra experience points one thing that's kind of terrible about the sorceress faction is that they all start with navigation that's it they just start with navigation so i guess on water-based maps taking sorceresses could be the tactical advantage but otherwise it just feels like a waste because i don't plan on being on the water unless i have to be and, and hopefully later on you can get adventuring spells that will let you no clip across the map. Shrine of the First Circle, I'll get a free slow spell. That's excellent. Um, things like Dimension Door or Town Portal can be just better and eliminate the need to have to get in boats at all. Uh, I, that was another View Mines spell. Ooh. Whoa. That is a very good artifact. I don't remember what that artifact necessarily is. I, that looks like, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the wizard's hat that allows all spells to last for 10 turns, or if that's the wizard's hat that gives you access to all fifth level spells. But either way, it's a pretty good artifact. Uh, if it's the all access to all fifth level spells, it's, it's a must have. If it's just an extra 10, turns per spell that's still not bad we're way far away from the red tower let's uh, fill out the rest of our of our army I might as well start getting some of these upgrades I'm gonna need things like five wood five wood five mercury um, and then crystal and things like that I will get my crystal garden now because I don't want to forget about getting the extra pixies uh, and then we'll start upgrading the units so that way we don't have to worry about paying extra, paying out the nose to upgrade them later. The Oracle is like the fully maxed out Thieves Guild and we can see all the strengths and weaknesses of our opponents. So there's just me and one other big bad evil guy. Um, if we see this warlock, that's, well, it's spelled A-G-A-R, Agar, I suppose is his name then we might consider not fighting him. But his toughest unit right now in his army is the level two gargoyle. So at least he doesn't already have dragons or something stupid. Because I'm the blue player, he's he's richer than I am. He's got more wooden ore, gems and crystal, things like that. But I've got more total army strength. Maybe that's because of all the dwarf dwarven defenders I have scattered throughout all the towns. But it is worth noting that he has a higher income than me. So maybe he has two or three towns and I need to make sure that I, I jump on him as soon as possible. We will see. Um, I'm really kind of getting out into the, into the weeds here a little bit. I'm a little worried that somebody's going to pop out and surprise me. And if they do, we will do our best to fight them off. Crystal Mine will take that. start upgrading some of my upper tier units. Ah, hi there. 
We'll take basic archery from the witch's hut. Uh, get a little extra crystal. I don't know if I can get... I don't think... I, I don't know if there's a whole lot in this corner, but right now I'm not going to go find out because I don't think I have an army to really beat some tough units. So we're going to just kind of see where the river takes us. An extra six mercury there could be super helpful. Mass haste, shrine of the third circle. Uh, a lavish shrine attended to attended by a group of high priests. In exchange for your protection, they agreed to teach you the sophisticated spell mass haste. That is a game changer. I wish... You know what? I think I can take off these iron golems. This artifact is wonderful. This is a plus four to knowledge, which for this hero would give me 70 or 70 mana points. Uh, there's a magic well right there. I can I can get those all back immediately. There's probably one stack of steel golems in there. That's okay. We can we can fight that out. I am gonna split my my base dwarves and let them potentially take some hits that I don't want the pixies or the halflings to take. Let's see how this battle goes. The computer thinks I'm going to win when we fight it. My strategy here is going to be to let my ranged shooters do most of the damage because these iron golems are so slow they, only are, they are only going to move two hexes. And we can we can take down a ton of them before they get to my halflings. And spells are not going to be particularly useful in this case. Even the mass haste, even the the bless might be useful. So three spell power. I'm going to spend three spell points to bless my halflings so they all do max damage. Because the difference between one damage and three, especially since they're my primary damage dealers here in this strategy, it cannot be overstated. So last time I had done, uh, let's see. Last time the halflings did uh, 76 damage. With a bless spell, they are going to do 45. How'd you guys screw that up? Oh, because last time I had had good luck. And so with the good luck, I was able to do 76 damage, indicating how valuable the good luck can be even when i'm doing max damage 45 damage um it's not it wasn't nearly as good as good luck from the 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 map spell okay let me hide that log skip we're gonna let them get as close as they will come um, and I'm thinking to myself that the way that they're going to crash upon my units, it might be important to really just take down each stack a little bit so that I can pick off some easy targets later. Like this stack has only 15 hit points before the next golem dies. I'll skip one more time and take one more shot. And now we're going to be the aggressors. I am going to keep my sprites out of the way, though. Dwarves can take a hit, but sprites will get chewed up in a way that I'm just not excited for. Um, I might as well push forward there. The only issue is that now this second group of dwarves isn't going to get any damage off. I could have mass hasted. Perhaps it would have been the play. Um, at this point, I'm just going to take the hits, take the losses as they come. And go into full cleanup mode. Not bad. One battle dwarf and two regular dwarves. All dwarf life matters. Oh my goodness. So not only did I have to fight iron golems to get this artifact, but now I observe that it is guarded by a nearby green dragon. Green dragons are the sixth level creature for the warlock faction. They are the, the least upgraded of all the dragons that you can fight, but they're still going to have, I think it's uh, 200 hit points. 
and they're still going to do 30 to 40 damage. And I can't cheese them with spells. But this is a plus four artifact to knowledge. It's a great artifact. I'm going to fight the fight. I know I have the, the brute strength to do it. I'm just going to lose a lot of troops. Probably all the halflings and then some. Yeah, so the computer is going to say I'm going to lose a lot here. I agree. I understand why that's the case. And they're going to get to go second. Oh, no, that's that's even worse. That's even worse because then my battle dwarves aren't going to get the first shot. Because I'm fighting dragons, it's important to stay spread out as much as possible because green dragons have a two hex attack. Uh, their breath attack will essentially roast two units at the same time if given the chance. I don't want to give them that chance as much as possible. I really don't. I am going to stone skin. Let's see, should I stone skin my halflings? They're going to come right across the field and try and, and get the halflings first. If I can slow down, if I can, if the halflings can take two hits of damage, that'll be pretty helpful. Okay, and that did happen. The pixies might as well fight because they're in a little bit of a choke. No other unit's going to be able to really get back there. And they, there's no enemy retaliation, so so long as I don't double them up with somebody else, they might even waste one hit from the green dragons. Um, I'm not going to... Well, I am. I'm going to lose the three halflings here. They're going to attack and then get retaliated on. But that way, the green dragon is not going to retaliate against this stack of dwarves. The green dragon is going to go first this round of combat. I'm an idiot. Okay, I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm, I, I thought he wouldn't be able to fly there. I thought that there was... Uh, I, I couldn't tell where the cliff ended and where it began. I'm glad that the AI did that though the dragon ai for fighting uh, and trying to maximize their damage has usually been pretty good even in the base version of the game um i think that we yeah we overall did better though we we had one less loss or, or damage worth of battle dwarves as long as we keep the, the dwarves and the battle dwarves we should be fine but now we take our prize the foremost scroll of knowledge oh it's a plus five it's even better i have no regrets about that fight I'm, I'm sad I lost the troops, but that's why we have them. We're going to take the experience here between Eagle Eye and Leadership. We're going to take the Leadership. And then it's day seven. Are there any other dwellings we need to purchase? Or are there any other uh, buffs we need to take in, in that regard? The answer is no. So we're going to get the upgraded Stonehenge. Now, do not forget that through the whirlpool came this enemy champion airy i don't know if he's going to go right i don't know if he's going to go left i don't think that he can reach my town this turn but i'm still going to purchase a couple of base defenders anyway especially since i'm, I'm not going to have to pay a penalty later to upgrade any units i've, I've upgraded all my units except for the dwarves um, so just these defenders should be fine i don't have a left turret or a right turret but even if he can reach me it should be okay Maybe I'll steal his boat later. Okay, it looks like he's trying to get fresh with me. Scandalous. We'll increase our mana back to full. Um, the temple gives us full, or it gives us plus two morale, which is pretty fantastic. We're going to pick up this loose crystal. Archers are slow units. They... Uh, have a speed of two in combat and because I have these pixies I think I might be able to split my stacks into three and then get this fight done just to get the crystal mine I'm probably gonna lose all the pixies this fight but so long as I don't lose any of the grand elves I'll be okay with the results Wow yikes oh my goodness the auto combat thinks I'm gonna lose 14 dwarves and the the elves the computer thinks that in this fight the computer thinks that i'm just gonna i'm gonna get all these archers beating off the pixies and then focusing down the elves and then because my dwarves are so slow they're gonna eventually shoot down half of this stack let's see if by 
um, using some spells, I can I can flip the script a little bit. My best bet. Pixies are average, so these rangers are going to go next. Um, and so I I I think that my elves can probably kill two or three of the rangers. I'm not going to worry about casting shield in that way. I'm probably just going to take the 30 damage because that's going to kill nearly a full stack of archers every time I cast Magic Arrow. And where am I going to focus my efforts? I'll, I'll focus it at the bottom. Reason being is that if there's leftover stacks to clean, well, I'll, I'll do it at the top because if there's leftover stacks to clean up, I want them to be closer to my dwarves rather than further away. So I'm going to Magic Arrow this top stack, kill three archers there. Because I got good luck, I should take out this whole stack. No, I'm not going to take out the full stack. Wow. Okay, okay. Wow, good to know, good to know. Um, that's very surprising. Very surprising. Thank goodness I do have the magic arrow. I might as well see if I can kill one full stack. I'm a big fan of taking out stacks. There, there's a lot that can be said about that um, for long-term success. I, since, since I'm worried about this stack dying soon, I am going to attack the units that have not attacked yet this round, which is this second group of archers. And I'm going to attack that one and with these sprites going down and blocking in this group. The dwarves are going to start their long march across the battlefield. And then it's a new turn, a new magic arrow. Best best practice is probably going to be to have the elves shoot these rangers and then magic arrow one of these bottom stacks. So we'll magic arrow this bottom stack here. Uh, Pixies hopefully can just maintain there. Because there's no enemy retaliation, I don't have to worry about that. The sprites cannot do three damage, so I'm not going to be able to take out that stack there. But I can do some more damage there. There's three hit points left on this stack. There's one hit point there. I think it's a gamble on whether or not I'll, I'll do four damage or not. So I'm just going to take the for sure. Yeah, that sprite, those sprites only did two damage. So it, I, I chose correctly there. Um, and so even though I'm losing all the pixies, these magic arrows, as you can tell, are, are really coming in absolutely clutch. My pixies are going to jam up both of those, so I might as well take out the, the middle stack. This battle's over. I probably should have killed the bigger stack. Anyway, so we did a lot better than the computer did. The computer, again, we're on the version of battles where the computer will calculate without my hero using spells. So when I, when I do better than the computer, it's not strictly because I'm a tactical genius. Sometimes it's just because I am using my full resources as opposed to uh, limiting myself for future opportunities. Um, he is getting close. I, I feel like having four heroes on the map is, is fairly uncommon for me, but I might do it just because this is a barbarian who has advanced pathfinding, which reduces the rough penalty terrain by 50%. That's a good kind of secondary or go for hero. And then I can pop out and attack him and start sweeping through to the south. Maybe clean up some things here or maybe just pop right into the boat. I, I think I'm going to do that. It's going to be costly with the 2,500 gold, but let's do it. I'm not going to buy the dwarves because I don't want to buy them now and then upgrade them later. I don't, plus, I don't think I'll have the gold necessarily to max out all these other creatures. Oh, I did. It was it was close though. It was very close. Um, I'm left with the decision of what to do with these uh, base troops here. I'm gonna leave them for now, and then I'll split this stack of pixies, fight this fight, and then I'll deposit the good troops, the sorcerer's troops, back here, and and pick those other troops back up as this hero goes adventuring. The enemy has fled, no problem. I'm not. I'm not going to worry about that. Oh, you know what? I just realized though, they did have an artifact because they they 
went on to uh, a shipwreck survivor. Um, if I could have gotten them killed, I would have had that artifact. I, I do wish I could have had that one back. Um, that would have been one that it might have been worth it to at least try to fight. Yeah, and I am going to go into the boat um, and just see what I can find on the other end of the world. Master and commander of the far side of the world. And that person's name is Jacqueline. I'm out of money, so I don't need to worry about trying to purchase another building there. Witch Doctor's Hut is plus one knowledge. And I'm just sucking up all the resources I can. I'll pick up that other sawmill. Feels like I've had a lot of sawmills, actually. That should be my is that third sawmill. If I can pick that one up, that'll be my third sawmill. Is it is it great to have so many of the same resources? It doesn't hurt because I can always trade for other things. This observation tower is wonderful. And these dwarf cottages. These dwarf cottages. Oh my goodness. I just picked up, it looks like 42, 42 of uh, additional dwarves. Okay. Oh. So, a couple of things to note. Ammo cart makes it so your shooters never run out of shots in the middle of a battle. We haven't come across that yet, but for longer fights that can be a deal. There's a new town here that we've only just spotted, Avalon. Uh, it looks like it's the non-upgraded version or the, or the not a castle, but more of a hamlet or a village um, for the sorceress unit. Um, another hill fort so I can get my dwarves upgraded uh, that I'm just picking up from my dwarf cottage. Wagon camp lets you recruit the neutral creature rogues. Uh, rogues are, are, are actually a, a pretty good unit because they have the spying ability. They will let you see the exact numbers of whatever troops, neutral or enemy heroes that you're nearby. Um, so I may go to the wagon camp and pick up a couple. Uh, plus it doesn't hurt that they're a fast unit and they have no retaliation in combat. Um, this gem mine, I think that I'm going to make that a priority because I don't have a gem mine yet and I don't have an alchemist lab. So I'm going to pick up these dwarves, pick up some rogues. I don't think I fight the halflings because slow, slow dwarves against shooters is just a bad idea. And plus this hero is not going to immediately benefit from that artifact. But I will pick up those units, upgrade them, take the town or just take the town since it looks like I could just walk right in there and then, you know, kind of lock this area down and pillage its resources. Okay. I think that this is my quote unquote main hero. This, this is looking like one of those games where I have multiple main heroes and that's not bad. I am not going to worry about this watchtower where I could pick up neutral orcs. I'm going to visit this lean to it's a one time, uh, abandoned lean to that has some resources usually in it. It's never going to regenerate. It's a one time deal. The windmill, it can replenish its wares once a week. And so I'll pick that up now. And then I will upgrade the cottage. I've got plenty of wood, the 1500 gold. I'm not going to sweat it. And when I get the opportunity, I'll buy those dwarves. That was, that's a pretty aggressive movement. Okay. So, so there's a town right in here somewhere. I know that because all of a sudden Ari, who I killed over here, this was the champion that was in the boat. He ran away that allowed the enemy to repurchase him as a hero and now so he's been repurchased like two turns ago or one turn ago and he's got some some new and good troops here uh, and he is coming for Stormheld. I cannot stop him. I will purchase these dwarves not because I think that they are going to mount a successful defense but because I don't want him to have the troops. I'm a little petty like that but also when we're talking about war of attrition and things like that that matters. Um, and if I end up taking down some of his additional units, okay, great. Uh, let's see, Shrine of the Second Circle. So View Artifacts. I'm going to cast the View Artifacts spell since I have it right now. And this is going to show me whether it's in the Fog of War or in places I've already visited where there's some additional artifacts. Looks like there's plenty of artifacts open on the map. I'm wondering if there's an enemy here because there's just no artifacts. 
in this kind of dead zone here, if there was a castle and heroes were venturing forth, they could be picking up artifacts, and that would be that would explain why there's just a hole there. Um, I already mentioned that I suspect that there's a castle in there somewhere. Um, that would make sense with that dead spot. I'm just looking for dead spots. That's that's pretty much my, my point there. Okay. I will pick up the sawmill. I'll pick up the free gems. And I'm going to lose that town. I just got a feeling. More dwarves. Look at this. I've got, I've got 89 dwarves and then 12 battle dwarves. It's looking pretty decent to me. Distant sounds of music and laughter draw you to a colorful wagon housing rogues. Do you wish to have any rogues join your party? I do. At 50 gold with 42 that are available... No enemy retaliation. It doesn't indicate that they do spying. Oh, no. That must be Heroes 3. Yeah, that must be Heroes 3 where rogues have the opportunity to use spying. Darn. Yeah, if it's not explicitly stated here, I don't think it's a thing. So I lose some of the functionality. I, I lose some of the some of the utility out of this unit. But they're fast. They've got four hit points. But with no enemy retaliation... We'll take it. They're, they're cheap enough. We'll, we'll take them. We'll take all of them. Uh, ooh. There's this guy. Remember, he was when we hit the Oracle over here. He was their strongest hero at the time. But if he's only got a few gargoyles and some, some centaur shooters, I'm not too worried about that. If he gets a third level spell, that might change some things up. But remember, I've got mass haste. I've got some counterplay. I think that I think that with the rogues, we can plan on moving forward. I do just want to figure out what spell this is. This is haunt, um, and then I'm going to go into the boat. I used those movement points since going into the boat takes whatever movement points you had left over at the end of that turn, and just gets rid of them. Um, so I might as well have used what I had before I had to let them go. Forced to suffer a bitter defeat. Um, I am going to try and fight this. This will give me the opportunity to show the Warlock uh, level 5 creature. That was a wonderful move he did because Hydras are big, tough, and scary. They attack all adjacent enemies. So if you surround them, they're going to attack 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 hexes around them. Um, if there's a two hex unit like these griffins, for example, right there, they're not going to take double damage. They're not going to take damage from one hex and the other. They'll just take damage once. But up to eight enemies can get struck by the hydras. Tons of hit points, tons of damage, uh, that good, uh, no enemy retaliation, and uh, adjacent attack. What's what's their weakness then? They're, they're a great unit. What's the downside? They're very slow. They only use two hexes at a time, so with a haste, they become almost, almost scary. <laughs> they are scary. They're my favorite castle defense unit by far, um, in large part because, in large part because uh, the uh, you don't have to worry about the the two speed when you're adventuring, and. Uh, they can hit so many different units. It, it's it's just a good situation. They're my they're my favorite unit to defend a castle with. I'm gonna take out the units I can. I don't know if I can do 75 damage to these hydras. I sure can't when they're just absolutely dunking on me. Did you see that? <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> absolutely dunking on me. Uh, I am not confident that I can beat six Hydras with this army. In fact, I, I, I truly don't believe I can. And I don't have any combat spells on this champion. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna run. If we can, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can get a good offensive spell at this Shrine of the Third Circle. But otherwise, we're gonna just peace out a little bit. I don't know if he can see me yet or not. He's about to. We are one movement point short of seeing him. Gonna pick up basic pathfinding. I 
And we're going to go through this. Flotsam. You search through the flotsam, but find nothing. Um, it's interesting to me that the computer left that one, but it took two others and the shipwreck survivor. I think that the computer cheats in the sense that it knows which flotsams are going to give you something and which ones are not. Uh, I noticed in the last camp, the last scenario, it did that as well, where it left some flotsams and those were the ones that just didn't work or they, or they didn't have anything in them. Uh, how'd the computer know? <laughs> A whirlpool engulfs your ship. Some of your army has fallen overboard. We go from 21 goblins and four orc chiefs to two orc chiefs. So I lost two there. Um, now, I notice that he can, he can hop into a boat and then get me next turn. But for now, I am over here. Remember, genies are awesome. They're tough. And these ones are guarding some, some really cool things. So they're guarding, it looks like that's a plus four to attack, an artifact that'll give you plus one mercury a day. It's like having a, a mercury alchemist lab in your back pocket. And a genie lamp is the, is the place where you can generally recruit the neutral unit genie, if you so desire. Uh, that's, that's pretty interesting to me that we, we have that um, there. That's a tough fight. I would have to land here fight a pack of genies and then I would get anywhere from one to four genies as part of this booty. Only if I had a really good army would I consider that a, a worthwhile trade. I'm guessing he's going to hop in the boat. I'm wondering if this whirlpool is connected to more than just one whirlpool. I'm not seeing any other whirlpools in any other bodies of water. And so I can go through the whirlpool as many times as I want to at the cost of a few troops every turn. Um, or I can try and land. I, I don't know if he can get all the way over here and attack me. But if he does attack me, I got a feeling I'm going to lose. I'll give it a shot, though. Okay, and I like that information I've gained. Even if I do get attacked here, I like knowing that there's a, a spare town there. I don't think I have any other buildings that I need to purchase at this time. I do need to pick up the nearest alchemist lab that I possibly can. If you notice for my kingdom tab, I have one of every resource except for gems, sulfur, and mercury. And so if I can prioritize those, that would be ideal. Otherwise, there's no other buildings to purchase in my main town right now. I like that he decided that that was not a fight for that he wanted to fight. He did pick up a pack of battle dwarves. That could certainly turn the tide. Uh, and for that reason, I am going to... Um, make sure I upgrade my dwarves because going from 89 regular dwarves to battle dwarves is monumental, even if it costs me a turn. Note that he's got a spell book and he's already walked into two uh, third level shrines. If he has basic wisdom, then he's learned those spells and he'll be a tough fight to take. View towns. Okay. So we're going to cast the Adventure Map Spell View Towns. Aha! And immediately it, it reveals what we kind of already suspected, that there is a Warlock Castle in the upper right corner. They took my one Dwarf Hamlet here. Looks like there's another Sorceress or Dwarf Hamlet there, Dwarf Hamlet there, Dwarf Hamlet there. So a total of right now, I have, I have one, two, three, four, five towns. And he has one, two, three, four, five towns. I have my one sorceress castle. He has his one warlock castle. Um, good to know. Good information. And now I know exactly where he's at. Worth a third level spell slot? Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, treasure chest, instead of gold or experience, I have found a golden horseshoe. That's plus one luck in combat. Again, I'm trying to stay a little bit away from him. I was hoping I could get an offensive spell to maybe help me out, but I'm not going to worry about it. I believe that this artifact is a pocket watch that helps prevent you from getting hypnotized in combat. Um, hypnotized spells or other. I'll take the gold in this case. And I said I needed an alchemist lab. Lots of halflings. I'll, I'll 
pick up some troops on the way through, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get them. Okay, so I can't even get through there because there's, there's dwarves. Note that earlier on this uh, town, I had my hero mouse over it, and I could just walk right into the town and capture it. For this instance, there's a little sword icon and not the horse icon. The sword icon means that there's somebody in there. It's just unknown who the defenders are, how many there are. I'm guessing it's some dwarves. I'm not too concerned about losing a sawmill at this point. That's a great artifact. That's I think that's plus one to both spell power and knowledge. I'll pick up logistics and we're gonna take this guy out. Let me just make sure I think I'm gonna want two stacks of the rogues and then I think I'm gonna want three stacks of the battle dwarves. I think that makes the most sense. Okay, the computer and I both agree that we should win this fight. Let's just make darn sure that we mitigate losses. Um, for example, Mast Haste in this instance is going to be an absolute winner. I can't go all the way across the battlefield. I'm just going to position myself away from their battle doors so they can't get the first hit. And I'll cruise to the center. I am Speed Racer. Um, I'm going to jam up the centaurs, but take out the gargoyles. Again, no retaliation. We can see some great troops on that front. I think that these dwarves are my next priority. Um, in fact, so much so that I'll just not worry about these centaurs unless I have no other choice. And I didn't because of the way that their dwarves are positioned. They're just, they're just tied up. Uh oh. Will my thirty-four battle dwarves be able to um, kill eight when they're cursed, doing minimum damage? They should. I've got plenty of spell points. It won't hurt to just make sure. So, I captured an enemy artifact, that's a pendant of death. Uh, all holy spells are, uh, are no longer a problem for my troops. This is great if you're a necromancer because things like holy shout, holy word are not going to hurt your troops. And we are going to take the pathfinding. Since we already have logistics, we'll take the pathfinding. These two, spell, these two um, skills in combination are great for any adventurer. Uh, and the plus one attack skill is not bad either, especially for a sorceress. Picking up some attacks uh, skill here and there, very worthwhile. A lot of these these uh, mage killed so far are not really giving me a whole lot of combat spells. Um, I usually I stay in a town if I have very few movement left because I might as well stay at the mage guild, replenish my spell points. I've got plenty. I'm not going to worry about that for right now. Um, there's nowhere to go over here. And I can't get through there. But I did take this town. And so I will head north. I've just got my best units sitting in my castle. Somebody please go get them. A lot of my heroes have kind of converged into the middle of the battlefield. A group of rogues with a desire for greater glory wish to join me. Do I accept? Hmm, let me think. So I went from 11 rogues in that stack to 57. Huge. Uh, getting the free uh, Lucky Rabbit's Foot is wonderful. Halfling Hole, a group of halflings with greater desire. I'll take them. And I'll upgrade my dwarves. And that's a plus one to spell power if I can defeat some wolves and a treasure chest. I'll probably 
clear this way. And then have my barbarian here. I'm just going to see what the spell is. Summon boat. Yeah, it's kind of whatever. Okay. Now one thing I haven't talked about yet, um, and I did that on purpose, was I haven't talked about this adventure map point. Dragon City. Dragon City is a stat check in the sense that you have to fight dragons, and if you fight dragons and beat them, then you can recruit a certain amount of dragons every single week. I, I don't remember if it's red dragons, green dragons, or black dragons. I don't think that you get to just pick and choose. I think it offers you one of them. But because dragons are all immune to magic and fairly tough anyway, if you don't have the army to deal with them, you're not going to win the fight. You can't just cheese the fight by having some great spells or even great positioning because they have two hexes worth of breath attack. So you just have to be able to stand toe to toe with at least, at least, I think it's usually like three green dragons, one red dragon and one black dragon. Um, and if you can't, don't even think about fighting that fight. Another, another thing of dwarf cottages, look at this, this is wonderful. If I had said to myself, oh, I'm gonna go hard mode and not pick up free dwarves, then I'd be in a rough spot, but uh, I'm not going to be that guy and spit in the eye of a good time. Lots of nomads. Nomads are a neutral type of creature. You can't recruit them generally unless you come across a nomad's tent. They are, are excellent in the sense that if there's any desert on the map, they will eliminate your rough terrain penalty entirely on sand if they're in the army of whatever hero is walking over the sand. So just having one nomad in any army makes it so you have essentially expert pathfinding over sand. And sand has, or desert, has the highest movement penalty out of any terrain. Higher than snow, snow is 125. Higher than swamp, swamp is 1.75. I think that desert is 2.25. So it's, getting stuck in the desert is no joke whether you have a horse with no name or not. Okay, um, that's less than ideal. I knew, I know that wolves are tough, but it looks like I'm only gonna barely win this fight just on the strength of my battle dwarves. That's very concerning. Do I have spells? I got some spells, but 30, 30 uh, spell damage isn't gonna help me a whole ton because that's only going to kill one dwarf at a time. If I slow one of the if I slow one of the wolves, they will move down to 3 um, movement speed. They have 6 right now. They'll go from 6 down to 3. And so then they go 1 2 3. That's probably the best thing I can do right now is slow one of the stacks and then focus one of the other stacks. I'll plan on losing the halflings, but they were free units anyway. Oh dear. And then if I have these dwarves sit right here, because I can't reach and, and get the initiative on the attack, if I have them sit right here, then nobody can just sneak right through because they're two hexes wide and get to my elves. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let the halflings suffer. Just just die. Just die. Goodbye. I'm literally throwing them to the wolves. Huh. Uh, that just indicated just how tough dwarves are. The wolves did 31 damage and I lost one dwarf. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Uh, if I had a stone skin, I would use that. As it is, I'm going to curse this largest stack. And I'm going to try and take out these wolves that are slowed because they're going to take a while to get over there. These wolves are going to be doing minimum damage. I anticipate that these battle dwarves are going to knock them down to, you know, two in the stack at the next opportunity. Mm. Yeah. And then... Yep, I like this a lot better. 
Spells, man, they matter. Now, this is going to be the last turn that the slow is on, and because I have a speed 4, speed 4, and speed 4 unit, I better reapply the slow, otherwise they're going to get the initiative, all 10 of those wolves, and they're going to probably just kill my elves if I, if I let them. So I'm just going to wait, and now my dwarves are going to clean them up. That went a little bit better, wouldn't you say? Plus one spell power. We will take the gold. Still adventuring into the darkness. I know there was a hero around here. I don't know where he went. Uh, nomad boots are a plus to my adventure movement points per day. That's a great artifact. Hope I can get it. I'll take more dwarves. 72 dwarves. 72 dwarves. Out of the blue. Let me get this observation tower and then I might kill these mummies just to get my first gem mine but then I'm, I'm noticing that Baywatch huh, Baywatch I can purchase some battle dwarves and I probably will I don't think that 22 battle dwarves can kill six hydras especially when Aerie has some fairly decent spells but they can potentially they can slow them down enough so that Troy Ann can get back up there Unfortunately, this town does not have the means to make dwarves become battle dwarves, even though this one does. So I'm going to have to either find a hill fort somewhere in the darkness. Maybe this observation tower can help me with that. Uh, otherwise, I'll just fight the fight slow and steady. This is, this is worth it to me to fight nomads. Nomads are fairly tough. But I'm going to fight the fight because the reward of a spike shield, which is, I think it's plus two to attack and plus two to defense, um, and a shrine of the third circle for a third level spell, that's just really, really good to me. So we're going to fight this ourselves. I need to know, is it cheating that I see what the computer thinks about these fights? Um, and then use that information to fight the actual combat better myself. Let me know what you think, because I, if, if, if that's really what it is, I will fight every battle myself. No, stop. I will not fight every battle. It just will take too long. It's not that exciting. Um, I, I'm not going to do that. Nope, I'm going to change my mind. I've got to have the auto combat on to some degree, but maybe... I, I'll have to just accept the results um, more often than not. I don't want an unfair advantage, as it were, but it's just so much better than the alternative. <laughs> it's so much better. Uh, nomads are very fast, but right now my rogues are ultra fast. Um, these nomads, at least one of these, are going to go faster than probably these stacks, so I might as well chop down a big stack. I can't reach, so they're going to get some damage off, and then the fight goes better for me by a lot. You come across a bridge spanning a dry gully. Before you can cross, a troll steps out from under the bridge and demands payment before it will permit you to pass. You refuse, and the troll charges, forcing you to slay it. You take its spiked shield as a trophy. Yep, plus two attack, plus two defense. Great artifact. Identify Hero allows the caster to view detailed information on enemy heroes. As a third level spell, that's not so bad. I'm okay with that. I'm thinking that since it's day two, I can probably head north and reclaim this town and then potentially do a pincer attack where this hero goes to the left, this hero goes to the right, and take out Aerie. I know he's got at least one artifact that I would like to have. It may. It, I've got to kill him at some point anyway. Might as well get him now. Halflings. I'm going to be fighting halflings with dwarves, basically. Uh, and that's not going to go well for me. By separating my pixies like this, what I'm really doing is I'm just making it so the halflings are going to attack my, my elves less. Because they're going to be caught up attacking the pixies. See if we can do better. I think we can magic arrow one stack at a time and take it out. And that is what we're going to do. Who's going to go next? 
it will be the pixies. The pixies are all going to go across the map. Okay. Sacrifices were made. one pixie anyway oh never mind way to go pixies you go girls all right so now do i have one of everything i still need one sulfur mine one gem mine some free ballistics oh oops and i knew that there was another town because of that spell i'd used earlier but i forgot and there's a good chance that Jacqueline level one is going to go down. Still need 12 mercury for my phoenixes. They did not sally forth. I have no idea why. That's, that's very strange to me. But it happened. Between navigation and eagle eye. Okay, I'll take navigation. I should have... We'll tell you what, I've got this this other hero in the wings. I can probably travel this road up to that town and reclaim it. I'll pick up 22 battle dwarves and adventure into the unknown. Don't make a frozen reference. Don't make a frozen reference. Don't make a frozen reference. Into the unknown. Did you know that that movie and and specifically that theme that that song is one of the most grating and jarring pieces of music ever to grace any kind of cinema, ever. Um, something about the uh, the 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 dissonance in the voice from the the clean vocals into the uh, is just. The worst. I, I'm sure that other people are like, oh, I love it. What are you talking about? It's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure it's great. But to me, it is worse than Nails on a Chalkboard. Not even in the sense that like, oh, it's a song I hate. Yeah, there's lots of songs that I just don't care for. This one I actively am against. <laughs> actively. Um, there's so many free. This map is great because there's so many free units that you can get just from dwellings. I'll have to purchase pixies from the tree city, but otherwise this tree house, um, I might as well I might as well grab that on my way over. It'll help me kill some rogues. I'm not gonna worry about getting those nomad boots. I'm actually not gonna worry about that lean to either. There's a good chance it's already been pillaged by somebody else. And even if so, I don't really care about the two resources I might get out of it. Um, I will fight the Pixies. Uh, I shouldn't have fought the Pixies. Reason being is because I'm not going to be able to, to defend my Elves as much as I wish. Which is better? Take out a whole stack of Pixies or shield uh, a certain amount of damage. I think that just killing Pixies outright is probably going to uh, reduce the damage that they take anyway. Well, and if I attack, then both of these stacks are going to get one more hit on my elves. If I just move here, though, then only one more can can hit my elves this turn. This is going to sound crazy, but I think that you don't attack to try and save the elves. One hit point left. This could this could be good, or it could be bad. No no retaliation anyway, so I might as well attack. So then we're gonna magic arrow. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose one more elf. It it can't be helped. I'm gonna skip them. To take out that stack that hadn't had a chance to move yet. But we lose two instead of four. There's a gold mine. I don't think that gold is yeah, gold's not a problem here. I think that each hamlet does produce a certain amount of gold per day. I'm getting twenty five hundred. So one uh 1,250 here, and then one, two, three, four, five towns that are 
uh, doing the rest, five towns are making another 1,250. So each each hamlet is worth 250 gold a day. It's not bad. It's not bad. Since he didn't come out and attack me before, I'm going to assume that he has some reasoning for it. And I'm going to just, I'm going to plan on recklessly losing the hero, but getting some good information. Free sprites. Some of the sprites living in the tree city are willing to join your army for a price. Do you want to recruit, recruit the sprites? Yep, that'll be worth it. 120 sprites total. I'll take it. I don't know if they're guarding a, uh, a fairy ring. Just increases luck. I don't think I need to adjust. I will. I don't think I need to adjust these armies, though. There's got to be a... Okay, what, was, what were my... My hotkeys? Control? No, not control. Shift? Well, yeah, shift does that. How about alt? No, I think alt was to combine. I'm just going to hit the fast separate and just shift shift that way. And just have even stacks anyway. Um, losing 10 rogues. I'm not going to fight that fight different. There's not going to be any castle walls in that fight. So there's nothing interesting, I think, about that fight. Uh, we just reclaimed... He told her, yada, yada, and then she said, blah, blah, blah. That is a wonderful tip. Dear barkeep, have a piece of gold. It would be terrible if every time you clicked on the tavern, it cost you just like one single gold. It'd be funny, but uh, but not, uh, not ideal. I, I'm going to try and track him down. This hero has pathfinding and logistics, so I think I'm going to be faster than him in that regard. And... His hydras are absolutely slow AF. So I'm not going to worry. I'm, I'm going to be able to catch up to him. A group of gargoyles want to follow me? Absolutely. That generally doesn't happen. We talked earlier about these stone liths. It looks like these stone liths are probably the corresponding exit or entrance, depending on how you look at it. Um, he's trying to run away. We're not going to let him. I'm guessing that there's got to be in that town up there. I'm going to fight this fight myself. There's got to be some good defenders. Um, they're at least going to have hydras. If they don't, then then what has this all been about? Uh, remembering that there's you know attacks for all adjacent enemies to these hydras. I'm going to have to be kind of cognizant of how I fight this fight. There's one stack of two. I'm definitely not going to have my rogues go near the stack of two. But I might be able to have the rogues use their no enemy retaliation against single stacks and have the dwarves just take the, the brunt of the damage. Regardless, it's going to take a while for this fight to develop because they're so slow and my units are fairly slow. So I'm just going to move the fastest units on the field to the very middle and move my dwarves forward some distance that magic arrow was actually pretty pretty naughty of him um how much spell powers do you have seven yikes all right all right i see you baby i see you how many spell points you have potential well he's got 34 out of 40 left so he can do a lot of of damage that way um the nice thing is that dwarves because they're 25 percent magic resistance that is uh, magic resistance from the actual damage of the spell and a percent chance to just uh, ignore the spell entirely. Uh, it might be it might be nice to I might not have to worry about his magic causing um, chaos for the bulk of my troops. I'm noticing that because there's these these obstacles on the battle map I can maybe get something set up where not so much damage is, is taken or at least not as much 19 hit points left 44 hit points left one hit point left 66 hit points left um, I'll take out this one Hydra here I'll take out I can probably kill most of this Hydra, if not all of it. I, but I do want the for sure. Well, 
I want the for sure thing, so I'll magic arrow this one. I, I do take out that one. Yep. So I fought that fight not as good as the computer did. That's okay. Golden Bow. Maybe that was the artifact that he got from the shipwreck survivor. He picked up the gold watch, which doubles the effectiveness. Oh, doubles the effectiveness of hypnotized spells. I thought that that one prevented hypnotized spells. Um, that's fine by me. I, I Before I use up the rest of this hero's movement points, I want them to figure out, do you want to go south or do you want to go north? Um, this, is, this is crazy, but it's day six. If I can find out what these defenders are by fighting this fight, I can make the decision about whether or not I come up north or south. I'm going to go north uh, based off of this information. Um, there's no hero in here right now anyway. There's not many defenders. That's a doable fight for this army. I, and all I have is, is level 2 creatures and a couple of rogues. But I am confident that with 50 spell points and a magic arrow and dream that I can I can take that out uh, more more dwarf cottages that's pretty great rather than fight rogues and then rogues and then dwarves I'm just gonna stay off the road and try to go this way to, to pick up this last um, this this town because there's three towns left it's probably not very well defended probably not well enough to deal with 21 gargoyles and 51 or 57 dwarves I'm gonna let them run I'm not gonna try and fight them I'm gonna try and pick up some additional creatures it's day seven so if I wait they're gonna get another week's worth of growth so I am gonna win according to the computer it's not gonna be particularly close but I'm guessing that I'm gonna take a lot of damage from turrets a lot of damage from turrets let's see it yeah they have the the main turret the left turret and the right turret but when i win this fight i'll get all of their um all their growth for next week and i'll roll that into a win for this game it looks like the computer just didn't get off to a great start is really what happened in my opinion um, and that's why that's why we're just kind of rolling through this scenario this that's a little frustrating my catapult isn't isn't I don't have like ballistics on this hero and so even though I'm hitting their walls it's not taking them out this is gonna take a minute to, to get through these walls and then once I do get through the walls I gotta get through the moat and because I don't know which section of wall I'm gonna take out first it makes no sense to just hop into the, the moat just for funsies we'll spread out and we'll see where we get oh my gosh you know what though? I, I I should be magic arrowing their shooters. I should have done that three times or two times already. That's my bad. Okay, so we damaged that wall up top. So there's a chance that that's where we're gonna break through first. He keeps trying to cast magic arrow on my dwarves and so far so good. Um, he I've resisted twice. It's not gonna resist a lot of damage but it'll resist a little bit okay and there's my hole there's we have our heading oh magic arrow what's left of these centaurs there's not a lot and then this group is gonna be my primary boarding party surprise here I come I'm going to start magic arrowing the hydras. Four hydras is still worthwhile, but dwarves are not going to be too bothered, I don't think. Spiffing. There's going to be some fairly significant losses here, but got to do what you got to do.
Okay, and actually I did better than, than the computer did. I still lost all the rogues, but I didn't lose as many dwarves. And then we're going to sit in town overnight. This is the first time I think we've seen a warlock town. Warlocks, uh, I've you've heard so much about them from me, about how their, their sixth level unit is the best unit in the game. And by extension, that makes this faction, in my opinion, the best faction in all of Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Um, they also have some bonuses that, that I want to kind of mention. But start off with the creatures that you can recruit from the Warlock Town. Uh, you start off with the Centaur, which is a level one shooter. Much like the Halflings, they, they provide a lot of value early for that reason. And their growth is pretty terrific. Because they're a, a shooter, though, they get focused down quick. And since they're the only shooter in the faction, unless you pick up some other shooters that enemy AI wants to target down, generally it's hard to keep a good stack of centaurs going. The damage is nothing to write home about. The hit points, they're very fragile, but you can get a lot of growth. Gargoyles are a flyer unit, one of three in this faction. They are very fast, so early on they're, they're super great to have. Better than boars from the wizarding faction because they fly and so they cross the entire map on one turn every single time. Um, griffins have a great speciality where if you um, get attacked by a unit, you get your retaliation. And while other units only get one retaliation per turn of combat, griffins can retaliate an unlimited amount of times. So a huge stack of griffins can be very difficult to deal with for any opposing army. Minotaurs are a great unit. Um, whether they're their base level or upgraded, they're the first unit in the Warlock faction that can be upgraded. They go from Minotaurs to Minotaur Kings. Um, their, their speed is always going to be good, at, at the very least serviceable. They, they do some great damage. I mean, it, between 5 to 10 damage, that's a huge range, but they generally do pretty well. I think that Minotaur Kings even have good morale as, a, as an ability. They just generally have more chances to take two turns per combat. They're they're one of my they're one of my favorite units. They're just a solid unit. Plus, from a mythical sense, you know, Minotaurs from a maze. Come on, that's pretty cool. The Hydras from the swamp. We've seen the Hydras in action. They could be super great. The the HP is so high. The the damage output can be pretty fantastic, and the growth isn't terrible. Uh, it's comparable to it's comparable to the unicorns. Unicorns have a base growth of four per week. Um, the highest. Uh, fifth level growth we've seen so far I believe has been champions um, I think that they because they get six a week as their base growth but then lastly but certainly not leastly we have dragons 200 hit points average speed but they're flyers massive damage between uh, a floor of 25 and up to 50 uh, dragons can really pack a punch they're immune to spells and so you have to deal with them on a brute level uh, force even titans you can lightning bolt but not dragons so how are you going to take care of them you just gotta whack them until they die uh, dragons are the only unit in the game that can be upgraded twice so you go from green dragons to red dragons and that gives you i think an increase of hit points from 200 to 250 they get faster they do uh they have a little bit more attack and a little more defense stats and then by upgrading them from red dragons to black dragons, they max out at 300 hit points. The damage, I believe, still stays the same at 25 to 50, um, but then their speed is the most, the, the highest you can get. They're a force to be reckoned with. Um, I'm, it looks like I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be getting dragons this game most likely. I, I'm gonna have the sulfur, I'm gonna have the mercury to do it, but I would need to get the maze. The maze requires the crypt. What were they doing the whole time? What was the AI doing? You didn't even get your crypt. Were you just, could you not get the crypt because you didn't have enough ore? And then because of that, you couldn't get your minotaurs. And because you couldn't get that, you couldn't get your green dragons. I, I'm, I'm very confused. So anyway, the troops for the warlocks are, are, are fantastic. It's, it's probably the best faction in my opinion. Wizards, a very close second. Um, and then they also have a special uh, faction building in the dungeon. The dungeon increases the income of that town by 500 gold per day. So you have base level 1,000, you have plus 250 from the statue, and then plus 500 
from the dungeon. One warlock town is going to get you 1750 gold per turn. That is ludicrous. Even just for a, a secondary town or a third town, um, it's worth having just because it'll generate you gold. Um, so, and, and as we've been listening to the, the town theme with the horns, with the, with the trumpets and the, and the, the, I don't know what, what do you call him? The singer, I guess he sounds like an opera singer. The production values in this game are just terrific, just terrific. I'm going to leave my hero here, uh, overnight and I'll think about picking up some of those warlock troops soon. Um, otherwise we're gonna try and finish this map up I think it's I think it's one let's see how quickly we can wrap it up ready set go sprite growth I don't care buy all your guys upgrade these guys okay and off we go uh, take out this town I'm just gonna accept those results we'll take mysticism because why not there is one more town to be had here He's only got centaurs in his army. He's probably going to reinforce that with dragons. Um, I'm going to do something a little stupid here. Because there's not a whole lot of troops I can pick up, I am going to pick up the hydras, and I'm going to pick up the griffins. It's nice to have some good flyers. Uh, for, and for that reason, I'll also pick up the gargoyles. I won't worry about any of the other potential things I can get. I've got plenty of gold. I'm going to purchase a hero. Hey, I'm going to get her back. What's up, Jacqueline? Good to see you. And I'm going to send Jacqueline over to the demon cave. This is my least favorite adventure object in this whole game. Let's see if it, we can make it work. The entrance to the cave is dark and a foul sulfurous smell issues from the cave's mouth. Will you enter? The answer is yes, I'm going to. You find a powerful and grotesque demon in the cave. Today, it rasps, you will fight and surely die, but I will give you a choice of deaths. You may fight me, or you may fight my servants. Do you prefer to fight my servants? Now, if you say yes, I'm going to fight your servants, then you are going to have to fight. It's a lot. It's a lot, a lot. It's like, I think it's, um, I think it's uh, like full stacks of 10 to 20 Earth Elementals, which are a neutral level or a neutral creature that is very strong, slow moving, but tons of hit points, packs a punch. And you have to defeat that army. So if you fight the servants, you've got a fighting chance. Otherwise, I can hit no and I will have to fight the demon himself. And it's literally a coin flip, 50-50. If, if I fight the demon and I win, I overpower him. I just get an artifact for free. If I hit no and I just lose, I just die. So I'm going to hit no just to see if I'm going to win or not. And remember, this is a 50-50 coin flip where if I, if I kill the demon, I get an artifact. And if I don't kill the demon, I just lose my hero. The demon leaps upon you and has its claws at your throat before you can even draw your sword. Your life is mine, it says. I will sell it back to you for 2,500 gold. <laughs> So I lost. I, I'm not going to get the artifact. And then he has. And then if I, if I wanted to keep this hero, I can just give him 2,500 gold. No, sorry, Jacqueline. Bye. <laughs> so then I just lose the hero. <laughs> what? What? What a crazy mechanic. Now that's interesting. It says already visited. I don't know if it's a one-time use or not. So I'm going to buy a second hero. <laughs> And I'm just going to start feeding heroes to the demon cave to see how this works. The Let's see. Will I enter? Yes, I will. Except for evidence of a terrible battle, the cave is empty. So it is a one-time use. Uh, and then and really, you get the opportunity. Do I, do I fight some earth elementals and for sure get an artifact if I win? Do I roll the dice and see if I fight the demon or not? Or... Yeah. Or do I just, you know, not have the gold to save my hero and I lose my hero and just everything sucks and I'm bad at the game. It's just ludic. It's, it's great. It's great in the best way possible. Okay. I'm, I didn't fight that last battle. I don't think I need to. Red player has been vanquished. Major event completed. So that is scenario three for Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Thanks for coming along with me on this one. 
Um, next up is the Carator Mines, and we will pick up with that next. Looking forward to it. See you soon. Fix Fox out.